unlock your artistic potential, create some watercolour boats with a free template. Hello, lovely Gary. Hello, Rachel. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, my dear. A little bit hot, as we can see from the outside. If anybody's watching these YouTube videos in the middle of December, they're like, why are you dressed like it's 90 degrees? Because at the moment, it is where we are filming. Um, but lovely YouTuber, lovely to have your company. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't joined our channel before, let me very quickly tell you what we do. This is Gary, I am Rachel. And what we do every week is an arty, an arty, an arty exercise, a creative exercise. And we give you a different exercise every Friday. So you can go into our tea time tutorial list right now. There are over 45 videos and you can just pick up anyone. All you need is literally some pens pencils and a piece of paper. No artistic supplies, no easels, no beret. I mean, we don't need any of that. <laughs> we just need to have a pen and paper. Please do give us a thumbs up and a, a like and a comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell because all those things help us to get our content out there. There may be other people like you who've not heard of us and who would love to see what we're doing because they may get something out of it. So if you want to go straight to the RT exercise, I will put the time codes below, bing, and you can head off to our RT exercise. But if you're saying to do a spot of mindfulness, uh, this is where I just throw something out there and then Gary and I discuss it. And I saw a video, Gary, um, on Instagram. It was this chap. I know we talk a lot about our childhoods and how they affect us in later life, but he actually said something today that I've never really heard of. And it's weird. We always believe, Gary and I, the universe deliver you messages at the right time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is the right time for me because I've done an awful lot of soul searching and changing my life, my idea of life, my idea of how I treat people, how people have treated me and my own childhood and how it affected me. And it's called these days childhood wounding. And this chap today said, how do we then move on? He said, and what you actually have to do now is start looking at your future self. So when you've done your healing and you've looked at your past, you now have to turn that ship and start looking in the opposite direction at actually where you want to be and how you want to behave and who you want to be and start now building the life with the healthy relationships that you want. And I feel like that's a, a, great, a great bit of advice is that mm -hmm. if you've done the work on yourself, now start focusing on what you want your life to look like and start creating it rather than just focusing on the wound and trying to heal it healing is actually moving on outside of it so there you go thoughts yeah. gary <laughs> i don't know if you just saw me but i was like i was really intently listening there and i just grabbed the pen because i could just I, this thing just kept coming to me coming to me and it said emotional loop so we get into an emotional loop yeah. of that childhood drama. And though you just be like, you recognize it and you, you like to say you're sat there, you want to heal it and, you know, but it's a loop, it's a circle, it's going round. It's the groove in the record that's got stuck and it just keeps going round and round. You don't need to keep, yeah, analyze it. You know, it's there. Now, as you say, you're gonna look outside the circle and outside the circle, is something new, you know, new things to get on with. May, things perhaps you've forgotten outside the circle because you've been so wrapped up in looking at this emotional loop that we've got into. And again, that emotional loop is we're attracted. We become attracted to people within that emotional loop. So you said past relationships, you found that you were always looking and it was happening. It didn't say, I don't think subconsciously you were looking. It, was, um, it wasn't consciously, it was subconsciously it was happening because it was familiar and it's, when something feels familiar, we're drawn towards it. Well, in fact, that familiar wasn't that good for you or it wasn't, it, you needed to move away from that. So the unfamiliar is the thing that's actually probably going to heal anything, isn't it? When we yeah, go through the familiar, it's going to be, oh, I'm back here again. You know, what you're doing is you're recreating your childhood, which was chaotic and you were lost in the middle of it and you were trying to get their attention all the time and probably trying to heal them by giving, 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 giving. But what you're now doing is creating that in your life. And the thing that you're most uncomfortable with is peace. And that mm. is your core, it's called your core programming. Because right. we, we do, we, we, we create, unless we heal those wounds, we try to recreate. And what you, I think what the brain is trying to do as well is recreate an experience to then change that so that then you can heal yourself through that. So. 
oh, if that person that I'm going to can't give me that love and affection, but I can make them, then that means that it wasn't about me being unlovable as a child. Yeah, it's not, it was never about you. So that that's the thing you have to heal. Seek that peace. Mm. Stop going for the drama. You've got to get out of that and find the new energy, which is the friends you haven't seen for a while and you used to have a good time with and just completely do something completely different. And then it changes. And it does. You don't really and the more changes come in, the better things start to get. And guess what? You start vibrating on a different level. That's what they call yes. it. You start attracting better things. And I always find that. So you're learning, you're yeah. healing. You're, you will always be triggered from those relationships. But it's how you deal with those triggers. Do you deal with them in the same way? No. Well, then you're healing. So always see it as a positive. It's like going on a roundabout when you're a kid, isn't it? You know, you used to hang yeah. on. You, sort of, you always spin it fast. When you'd be sitting there and having a nice little turn and then some little kid would come and jump on it and spin it like crazy and you'd be sick and want it to fly off. Well, just somehow exit. I'll tell you what it is. It's that wall, isn't it? The wall which spins round and you get stuck to the wall. Yes. And you're stuck there. The more it spins, you're stuck. You can't move. You can't move that hand. He's like trying to move the hand. It's stuck. It's stuck because you're in a circular vortex of energy. This is like... and. You can't move. That's what it is. Crawl out. <laughs> You're not this ride. Oh, don't go again. <laughs> there you go. Right then. Well, we're going to do something much more calming now mm. than all of that, fair, the, all that roller coaster right. ride stuff. Because we're going okay. for a little swim on the sea. Okay, let's bring this into view. So, I have given a little PDF for you to download for free of these loads of little boats here. So we've got lots of little boats. Now, a little bit, it's quite, you know, this is not a tax taxing exercise. This is really a little bit of coloring. And then we're going to color in, we're going to collage, and we're going to create a little scene, you know, just some little boats. And I like the idea of boats just bobbing in the sea, just nice and calming. But the most calming thing is, it's just really remember when we were kids and we did, um, colouring in we've got our colouring in books and we've got our colouring in things in so we're going to colour in just I'd say maximum three boats choose three boats you can by the side of me you could use wet media you can use uh, felt tips you can always got some felt tips around you could use some coloured pencils anything you can find at hand now I have so when you when you print this off you've got options so if you've got a little bit of um, sort of uh, just ordinary print paper that's fine print paper will easily take pencils and felt tips but if you want to perhaps try with some wet media what about cut a piece of cartridge paper to the same size as an a4 size and just put that through your printer so you've got a little bit more sort of rigidity to it and you'll take a little bit of wet media i'm just going to put some spare paper to one side so with my paint brushes so i'm going to just use a little fine paint brush to get started and just do that to start with and i'm just going to look at choose three and I'm just going to just take some nice colour and I'm just going to colour in some of my boats. At this point I need to remember to put my glasses on so I can see so I'm not going to get it too wet I'm just going to colour in with some nice strong pigment like that just put some paint in. If I'm doing like the bow of the boat is orange to this one I might pick the orange up maybe it's going to be picked up in the flag so while the paint is on the brush you can always think of another one that you're going to paint and maybe it might be that you choose another one at the moment while you've got the orange and that one could become an orange now i haven't consciously done this but i know that my that orange is going to really pop against the blue of the sea because if we talk color theory now this is getting really serious now color theory orange is the opposing color to blue and so it will really stand out so I've done a couple of colours of orange there already. Now, what other colours shall we use? What other ones? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We're nice. I'm not going to use a blue because we're going to got the blue of the sea, but we could possibly use a nice bright yellow. Maybe a nice bright yellow could be used in there as well. So I'm going to do another, choose one more boat, and I'm going to maybe just use the yellow. So I'm going to use this one down here, and I'm going to do stripes on that one and again because I've got the yellow in my hand I might pick the yellow up I might actually use it on some of the others so while I've got it in my hands I've got almost got now I've got three boats on the go with different colors in there so I might put that just while it's on the paintbrush as well quite like 
a wet medium because it is quite instant and it is goes on really really quickly you could use pencils though all the felt tips and they're just as good and pick up some green now again and just pick up a nice bit of green just going to color in that for a minute I think I might throw in that little flag, that there, and then maybe just across there. Where else can I use the green? Maybe I'll have a green little window there, like that. So let's have a look what Rachel's doing. How are you doing, Rachel? What well, do you, you know, <laughs> I mean, you've done it quicker because you've been with your... Um, your you got your I actually, these, you can't see, but they're glitter pens. Oh, I know you like a glitter pen. I know. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do my little boats. They're going to shimmer in the sun. But you can't you can't see it on the camera. Uh, but the problem with them is it takes quite a while to um, to colour them in, of course, because it's very it? like nib. Well, a little tip sometimes is what you leave behind. So you don't have to colour in everything. So you can leave some white so you yes. don't have to and in fact sometimes when you leave a little bit of white it actually makes the um like the the image that you're filling with color just a little bit better it just makes it a little bit just gives it a little bit better finish to it so you don't have to do it all of course i am of course you are <laughs> <laughs> a bit purple a little bit of purple in there i'm gonna do a brush Now, when I was just asking, I love going to stationery and art shops. When I, from young, I've always headed towards the stationery shop. I love things like, like you've got different types of pens. And I would have bought anything if it was a pen that changed colour with heat, if it was a pen that had glitter in, anything yeah. like that. Are you similar? Do you go for the, do you like stationery or not yes. really? No, I do. I do. <laughs> and, it, you know, I mean, it came from, I mean, you know, this is the thing you get out of the habit because... When Maddie, you know, my daughter was um, a lot younger. Yes. Um, you know, we, uh, we were saying this the other day, actually, with her. I mean, I, I still think I would have been the same, but, you know, she's 18. So although we all had phones when she was three years old, um, they probably weren't as advanced as they are now in terms no. of, you know, and things like TikTok didn't exist. Did, did Instagram exist when she was three, 15? I don't honestly. I don't think, think so, so. No. no. I mean, I just, I don't know, but. The thing is, um, you know, I had a phone that I could text on and make calls on. I know that much. Um, so I wasn't on my phone all the time. But I think it is sad when you you see people in the street. You know, I'm not judging people. Everybody is to their own and everybody does what they do. But, you know, it's so important to socialise children and to talk to them and to play with them. And I think so many people do now depend on devices. So, you know, they call it the nanny in the corner, don't they? Give the kids, yes. it's the nanny in the corner. Um, yeah. I think that's really quite sad. So I think even I think even today, if I'd had all that technology, I still would have done all the crafty things that I did with her. Um, we did. We used to do a lot of crafty stuff together. A lot. And that's why, to be honest, I've got so many of these paints and pens. I mean, she's got, you know, a little drawer in her bedroom. Well, I say a little drawer, it's about eight drawers like a tall boy and six of them are filled with RT supplies. Are they really? Yeah. Are they? That's good. So, That's nice know, we, to hear. Yeah. And, 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 you know, none of it is expensive. And when you look at it, you go, wow, I've spent a lot of money and I charged it on it. But none of it was expensive. It was all, as you say, we'd go into a stationery shop and we'd just buy some offcuts of paper. We'd buy glittery pens. We'd buy pencils. You yeah. know, if we went out, well, like I remember going to the lakes once and, you know, the same thing. We'd, we went to a shop and she was like, oh, look at those pens. They're so glittery. You know, and we'd buy glittery pens. Yeah. And, so, you know, this is this this little project we're doing now is a great one. So if we've got, you know, when the holidays come up, if you're looking after children or you need to entertain children and get them sort of engaged in something, then this is the perfect project for it. So you could get them, you could all join in. You can all print off a sheet. Everyone can have their own boats and they can all colour them how they want to. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, I wish that um, I had... Oh, I don't like that colour. I wish that I'd had. Um, I wish that I'd had a you know a channel like this when Maddie was little because it would be so easy to just literally log on and you know do the exercise. That yeah, together. Be. They're all yeah. they're all children friendly. Our exercises, absolutely all children friendly. 
So, yeah. That's looking good. good. Oh, you still so did you, you, you've now gone to paints now. So you've had the pens, you're now doing some paints. Yeah, I've got this little flag to do and then I'm done. Lovely. That's good. So when you are done, I would say we don't need to dry with the hair dry yet, though, if we need for, to catch up later, but just let them dry, dry naturally okay. um, on the sheet and you can go back to them. So when they are dry, you can go back over and put a bit of pen. So we might do that. Let's we might do that. So I'm going to just put those to one side now you've got to think about creating the c and the c that it goes on so again you might need another just another piece of paper i'm gonna get i've got a nice piece of paper here again this doesn't have to be expensive cartridge paper this could be the printer paper anything like that but i am using this is um sort of a, a reasonable quality paper and um, i think it's called a mixed media paper that i'm going to use but it's fine now what i want you to do Let's think about the seat. We're going to try a few techniques here. I've got a candle here and Rachel's got a little tea light. Yes. And um, just was, we're going to do a little bit of wax with this. And I think we've done this a couple of times before on some of our projects. But we're just going to put a little bit of wax with this across the page. And I'm going to do, if you look, if you just look at the action, I'm doing like, I'm really pressing quite hard. And I'm going to do a zigzag which is getting sort of like narrower as it gets to the top. So just sort of thinking about waves running to the top. So I'm just doing that. I'm then going to really, I'm going to wet, just put some water, some nice clean water over the page. So it's sort of reasonably wet like that. And then, then I'm going to dip into my nice paint. I'm going to pick up some nice blue paint and I'm just going to let that just meander across the page so and where the wax is you can see that you just get a little bit of resist coming through so just a little bit of white coming through to the blue I'm just using quite a wide brush here. If you haven't got a wide brush, I mean, I'll tell you something that does work quite well is those makeup brushes that you can, or sponges that you can get. And you get a little pack of those and you can then just dip them into some water and then dip them into the paint and then just brush them across. So there we are. We've got quite a nice, like covering. And it doesn't have to be completely e even. It can be a little wishy-washy, but we're now building up some textures. I think at this moment, I'm going to just give it a little bit of our, one of our favourites, which is a little bit of splat of some paint. So I'm just going to pick up, again, some more blue paint. And I'm just going to just tap that in onto my work. So I'm just going to do that. Now, I'm going to now take, for the moment, I'm going to take my hair dryer. I'm just going to give this just a dry, so I can just dry it and just work over it just to get dry. Because we're going to just do a little bit more work into it while it's dry. Doesn't take too long to dry. Still, maybe it's still a little bit more pliable, but as you can see, that the whole thing is just sort of like dried here and done that. How's Rachel? Let's have a quick check on Rachel. Let's see what she's doing. How's your? Yes. Aha! I'm just drying it. Hang on, I'll just bring mine in. Ah, right. oh, nice. Lovely. And again, you can add any other texture that you want to, but think about the waves. Think about sort of wave marks and maybe sort of like you can put little sort of like wave lines running across it but this technique it just builds up just you're just building up some texture some movement onto the page that's all you want to you're just adding some movement to what you've got I've got my favorite little posca pen here as well and i might just add a few little dots in i might just add a few little white lines that's it. Lovely. Okay, does it need another dry? Is it quite dry, Rachel? Bad, it's not bad. Not bad, good. All right then, so now we can have a look at our boats. If you think the boat needs a little bit more work added to it, you can also add a little bit. Now the boats are dry, they're not wet anymore. You can add a little bit of marks to it if you want to. You've got your glitter pens. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the boats. Now, the temptation will be to cut. So if I took, let me just cut. I'm going to roughly cut just on, on the outside, 
just roughly, I'm going to, let me cut mine and I'll show you. I'm going to cut one boat out. So, here we are, one boat. Now, what I don't want you to do is try and cut right up against the line and try and cut the whole thing out, you know, really like completely accurate. You don't have to do that. So if you cut almost like just leaving yourself a little border all the way around, so you're not trying to cut right against the line. So if I do this one, then you'll see what I mean. So you're just literally just roughly cutting out. So there's like a little border all the way around, like so. So if I hold that up, you can see, can you see that? So it's just like a little border. And then you can then, that's going to be placed onto that image. So start cutting out. I'm going to cut the rest of them out. But just remember, you don't have to really cut up to the line. I think, one, you challenge yourself too much to try and cut it. And in fact, what makes the illustration look quite cute and nice is that you have left the white around the outside. You shall have a little fishy when the yes. light comes in. <laughs> Which at one time, you know, those sea shanties were really becoming quite popular, weren't they? I think. Yeah, we... they were. Yeah. On um, it's funny because on uh, Sunday just gone, we went down. Um, well, went I said went down. We actually went a little bit further up the Bristol Channel um, to a place called Clevedon, and um, there's a paddle steamer that used to um, years ago used to frequent this area, ferrying passengers between Wales across to Bristol, across to the along the, the coastline down towards the Atlantic coastline. And um, called the Waverley, and it was coming into a place called Clevedon. It was coming in at uh, six thirty, and when the boat came in, there was—I mean, loads of people. Lot it was very popular. People wanted to ride on this paddle steamer going across the channel and up and down the Bristol Channel. Um, they were playing sea shanties, and oh. they were—it was lovely. To, we just sat on the benches and watched everyone clamber on and off this boat, and yeah. we just listened to that, and it was lovely—a lovely atmosphere. Um, something really nice to do and I think that there's something in all that nostalgia isn't there of old yes. means of transport and old you know really nice right you cut yours out I cut mine so now you've got to think about composition composition where do these boats go think of it like a triangle in a way um slightly you could have one slightly in the foreground nearer if you've got one that's slightly smaller I would put the smaller one further away from you so the smaller boat goes away so once you're happy the idea is like Rachel's just done that is she spread her boats out to the four corners of the seas in fact if you bring them in slightly and allow yourself to have a much more can you see that you've got much more do you bring them in and it actually yes. creates have much more space above or below or to the sides rather than spreading them all out so you can think about where they all go like so and they don't necessarily they could be slightly animated so they could be bobbing up and down they don't have to all be square on they might be moving up and down on the waves as well so there's a few things that you can think of so you see I've turned mine at a slight angle and how they are now almost there's energy there's animation there because I've not squared them right on then grab yourself a glue stick I like a glue stick because it's actually really great with paper and it doesn't warp or buckle too much but you know if you haven't got a glue stick I don't know if anyone's ever made some old wallpaper paste up or flour and water paste you could just add flour with some water in some salt in there and you could make a glue with that so even if you haven't got a glue stick you can still make some um, paste up to stick it down so I'm just going to put some glue on the back of my little illustrated boats trying to remember where I put it so that I know but with the glue stick if you place them in the wrong place and it's not quite right it's not going to dry instantly so you still have time to lift them off and reposition them if you want to so you can still do that and the template that uh, Gary has very kindly provided there is on our website. The link is below. All you have to do is click. That will take you through to our shop on Crafty Monkeys. But of course, it is a free template. There are other free templates in the free template section as well that you might want to look at to go with other tea time tutorials. We've got feathers in there, all sorts of things. But this is available for free for you to print out uh, with the link down below. So check it out.
So that's it. It's just something easy and fun to do. As I say, get the grandkids involved or just do it for yourself. Sit in the garden, get your pens and paper out. Just play with some boats and have some fun and put down the phone for 20 minutes. <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much, Gary. And uh, thank you to you, lovely YouTuber, for joining us today. And uh, do have a look in the Tea Time Tutorials because there are at least, I think, 50 videos in there now for you to play with. So do have a look at our other art sessions. And of course, we will see you for the next one whatever that may be it'll definitely be in a week's time from this but if you're watching in december it's just going to be in the list so hello see you later everybody bye, bye.